So today we're speaking about Francis Williams, who was the first black poet in the British Empire from Jamaica in the 18th century, and likely our first black cantab. Francis Williams was the child of free plantation-owning slaves, which were able to support him coming to Cambridge in the 1720s. There's a bit of mystery about Francis Williams' life. It's actually said that the second Duke of Montague supported him to come to Cambridge as a part of a social experiment to demonstrate that black individuals, when given the right education, could match or even surpass the intellectual achievements of whites. The difficulty with this story is that although it's often repeated, it's not actually well corroborated with documentation or evidence. This issue of mystery follows Francis Williams all through his records. There's not particular records that we can reference of matriculation or graduation. In fact, we don't even know what subject he studied or what college he was in. The thing that really ties Francis Williams to Cambridge is the fact that he was thought to study here and that he had a very prolific image taken. The painting itself, this rich, illustrious painting, demonstrates the man's wealth. And this wealth he amassed due to his family's incorporation in the slave trade. And this really shows the really complicated history. I mean, think about it. This man is the child of enslaved people, and yet he paid his way to come to Cambridge through likely the legacy of slavery. And this is a function of the fact that different parts of the British Empire at that time had an economy that depended on slave labor. So it's important here to take a step back. This individual is likely the first black cantab, and that is why we pay him a lot of attention. But it's important also not to simply forget about the more spotted parts of his legacy. In fact, we're not here to engage in hero worship. We're here to consider his legacy complexly and to situate that in the larger Cambridge narrative. And it's important to note that that wealth alone did not protect him from other social forces that existed at his time. When he returned to Jamaica, he uh, established the first free black school for black children. And he had an assault charge from a white planter. Because of his education, he was able to successfully argue in his own defense. And this threatened white lawmakers and plantation owners, who then changed the laws in order to forbid black people from defending themselves from charges that involved white people. The challenge with that is that it shows that regardless of the amount of wealth he had, he still experienced at least some degree of, of social stigma because of his race. So Williams then leaves us with a very complicated legacy that's important to Cambridge and for Cambridge to acknowledge because he's likely the first black person who came here, but also gives us an opportunity to reflect on the complicated and contested ways in which these historical figures emerge and gives us an opportunity not simply to celebrate them uncritically, but to actually wrestle with their challenges.